Well, first of all, that was wrong. In Santa Clara. I even said it that way. Regardless, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to part three of WrestleMania. And of course, episode four of the WWE 2K16 season. My name is The Ripper Danny B, and we are kicking off this one tonight with a fatal four way match for the Intercontinental Championship. And of course, standing in the ring right now, challenger number one, Dean. Ambrose, who's finally, finally been updated. We all love it. Next, I know the game listed as NXT. I don't give a crap. His name is KO Kevin Owens. And this is a sight you better get used to, people. Because this coming WrestleMania, Kevin Owens is bound to be on the card. To think soon. A man that has not been with the WWE a year yet. Oh, no, I think he's just crossed the year mark, hasn't he? He made his official debut in December, mind. Crazy to think. He's going to be on the WrestleMania 32 card. But before all of that, he's here right now. Kevin Owens, challenger number two in the Intercontinental Championship Fatal 4-Way match. Kevin Owens make an upset in his first appearance in my universe mode. Well, of course he can. He's Kevin Owens, man. Ridiculous to think he couldn't make an impact already. <coughs> and you realise I might talk a lot over the entrances. That's mainly because, like, the more sound I leave, the more likely I am to get picked up for, uh, you know, using music I probably shouldn't use. Shh. Don't tell anyone. Anyway, challenger number three. Unfortunate timing, really, because I'm recording this just after his injury. But he's still going to be a massive part of my universe mode, because he is. The man, he is Seth Rollins. And you may have already caught this from uh, from the guys in the ring already. Plus, if you know who the Intercontinental Champion already is, I'm not going to spoil it if you don't, because it'll be a nice surprise. But if you know who it is already, you already know this match is, I'm, I'm pretty much dubbing it the Internet Darling match. All four of these guys are, you know, real main eventers, if they were allowed to be. As we, as we ended the preseason, Ambrose and Rollins were still partners in the Shield. I don't know if I'm going to continue that yet. Maybe, but for now, let's introduce ourselves to the champion. Still don't know why they can't fix title belts to go underneath entrance jackets. Oh yeah, well, regardless. And I've just noticed we they changed Dolph's entrance. And we saw in the pre, not in the pre builds, the early builds, he had the swinging. Never mind. I guess that was bound to happen. Dolph Ziggler, baby, your Intercontinental Champion, a man that defeated five others in the Elimination Chamber to win this bell and now gets his first offense against Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens. This should be an instant clash at this one. I'm very much looking forward to it and this is how you kick off part three of WrestleMania. Here we go, Intercontinental title on the line. New belt, of course. Uh, they've managed to update all the logos this year, which they didn't have time to last year, which is pretty cool. It's funny, you know, when something's been around for over a year and they've only just been updated. I mean, this match is full of it, basically. But there you go. No, I haven't updated Dolph Ziggler's attire. I doubt I will. Maybe. We'll see. 
<coughs> I'm still coughing. My God. I'm still coughing. Ah! Probably should have had a drink before I started this. But, you know, I was determined to get as much content out as possible. Try and get this universe mode rolling again because you guys deserve it. Nobody complained when I stopped putting out for a couple of weeks. I explained in the previous parts about dying Xbox. Nobody complained, so let's get as much out as possible. Get this universe mode rolling again. And as you can see, this is a Fool's Count Anywhere match. We've had enough multi-man matches tonight. I figured we might make this one a little easier for the guys. It can happen anywhere at any time. We've got Dean Ambrose and Kevin Owens going at it on the outside. We've got Seth Rollins and the current champion, Dolph Ziggler, going at it on the inside. Seth, of course, is the only man in this match who have not won a mid-card title with the WWE. The irony, of course, being the only WWE champion. I know Dolph's the two-time world champion, but you know what I mean. It didn't exactly get treated like a main eventer in either case. Yeah, the ironic thing is Seth Rollins is the only man to have not held a mid-card title. Both Ziggler, well, Ziggler is a former Intercontinental and US, as you well know. And Kevin Owens is the current Intercontinental Champion on TV. Dean Ambrose, of course, one of the longest reigning United States Champions of all time. Despite the fact he defended it like three times. Nice kick out there by KO. Bearings haven't split up yet. Two guys in the ring, two guys outside of it. I'd say at this rate, Dean Ambrose has got the best chance of winning this thing. Out from under Dolph Ziggler's nose. And we've got an epic final part here for you tonight. Been a long time coming. I've changed the booking around a bit. Messed with things, but you know the main event already. You know exactly what's coming. As Daniel Bryan defends the WWE World Heavyweight Championship against Royal Rumble winner Neville. And of course the man who won the opening match on WrestleMania in part one. Go back and watch it if you didn't get it. Tyson Kidd. He won a fatal four-way match. And KO now going for a cover. Dolph looks like he's going to try and break it up. He's nowhere near as he's going to get to that in time. So he goes back to the top rope and continues where he was. <laughs> Which didn't work out at all. Though kick to the face, that is effective. As JBL always says, if you can't figure out how to put him down, just kick him in the face. I'm paraphrasing a little bit. I can't remember what he says. Mainly because I try not to listen. Got cover here from Dean Ambrose. The referee not wanting to, he's just pissing off. He's going for a pint. Wants a coffee break, maybe a piss. Oh, and then it's Seth Rollins that does that, isn't it? Under the ring. And I'm going to get myself into trouble if anybody important pays attention to these. If anybody important pays attention to these. Who am I, PewDiePie? <laughs> Kevin Owens going for the cover. The ref seems to be a little bit more engaged in going for that one. Took him a while, though. Guess it's a big stage, you know, it's going to happen. Four guys coming together a bit more now. Dolph's got a chair in hand trying to protect his title. While he's whacking KO with the chair, Seth Rollins almost took the belt out from under him then. <laughs> this is crazy. We've got two covers going on here. One. I don't quite know what happened. I think Kevin Owens just about got the shoulder up and... I don't know what happened with Dolphin Dean there. And the bloody staging. The rigging's in the way. I can't see what's going on. Oh, that looks like a cover there from KO. Is it? Oh, the referee's not going towards it. This is a ridiculous fucking camera angle. Honestly. Move! If this happened on WrestleMania, I'm just coughing again. I'm so sorry, guys. If this, uh, if this happened on WrestleMania, we'd be demanding our damn money back, our nan, 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 because that's basically the only reason most of us pay for the network anyway. Well, I don't know. I'll watch it for NXT and some of the original specials. I'm breaking down the ground. Ah, I can't speak to save my bloody life. Breaking Ground has been quite an interesting show lately. I've been watching that. It's been a lot of fun if you haven't checked it out yet. Go to the network, find it. It's only 9.99, people. Less if you're in a country with, you know, better inflation. We didn't get that, mind, in the UK. We were sitting there for the year that we were waiting for. Oh, hang on. 
no, dog breaks it up. For the year we were waiting for it, we were going, well, it's 9 99 yes, and we're waiting a year. But when we get it, because of the inflation, and the, uh, not the inflation, the exchange rate, we'll get it a lot cheaper. We'll get it about, for about five, six pounds, right? No, we still have to pay the full 90 99 We pay more than you Americans, so never complain about it. We waited a year and have to pay more, technically. We've got Cloverleaf there from Dean Ambrose. Seth has got Dolph down on the floor. This is this is anybody's game at this point. All four guys have had a pretty good showing so far. Dean Ambrose being dumped on top of Seth Rollins there. Broke the count. Sidewinder package bomb there from Kevin Owens. Yeah, he's not allowed to use a package power driver. Should we be shocked? Not really. Are both guys setting up for a charge finisher there? <laughs> wow, I think I think both guys were charging on Dean Am on Dolph Ziggler then, and it's going to be Dean Ambrose who steals it, man, and he has done. What an epic end to that match! That was freaking crazy. Both guys were charging on Dolph Ziggler as Kevin Owens went in. For Ziggler, Seth caught him in the pedigree and then Dean Ambrose steals it out from both of them. That was freaking epic. WrestleMania, baby, what do you expect? <laughs> My god, that was incredible. I'm proper happy about how that turned out there. This is one of the other covers that Dean, Dean and Kevin went at it for a while on the outside. And then again, another shot of Dean and Kevin Owens on the outside there. My God. I can't believe that. Just ha I've seen some crazy things happen in universe mode. But that's got to be one of the... Yeah, they were. Look at them. Both kind of getting ready for it. Seth did go for the kick on, on Dolph Ziggler, but Owens was in the way. And Owens took the brunt of it. And for some reason, Seth decided to punch the air above his head. Well, that's going to lead to an interesting situation going forward with the Intercontinental Championship, baby. But here he is, your winner and new Intercontinental Champion, Dean Ambrose. That is how you kick off part three, the final part of WrestleMania. Good God almighty, that was incredible. Well, two matches left to go. We'll kick off with the next one. So despite this being the same stream, we're now apparently in Atlanta, Georgia. So that works. I'm glad that works. Now, yeah, well, regardless, here we go, baby. We're kicking off this next match with the cover boy. He couldn't not be on the card, could he? It's Stone. Cool, Steve Austin. West Stone Cold competing in. Well, we already saw one brand new Creative Championship defended earlier in the night. A Sting won the WWE Legends Championship, but there is a title that is going to be just that little bit higher than the Legends title. The WWE Hall of Fame Championship. And that is what is on the line tonight in a one-on-one -on -one match. Stone Cold Steve Austin, WWE Hall of Fame 2009 versus my all-time favorite. You think you knew me. From Toronto, Ontario, Canada, weighing in at 252 pounds. Here's the rated R. Superstar, WWE Hall of Fame Class of 2012, it's Edge, who still, by the way, looks like he has the exact same model as last year. I know he's retired and all, but come on, come on, TK. But yeah, if you know anything about me, you know the Rated R Superstar is my all-time favorite and he was an easy pick. 
to challenge Stone Cold Steve Austin for the WWE Hall of Fame Championship. Pretty explanatory rules for that for that title. If you are a Hall of Famer, you may challenge for it. Simple as that. There it is. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. The Hall of Fame Championship. I did record the making of the belt and I will be putting that up as well. So it was a bit of a mismatch process. Here we go. One on one championship match. <laughs> one on one championship match. Edge versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. The Hall of Fame Championship on the line. This is an idea I, I had for this belt ages ago, and obviously there was no creator championship last year. I did have one very, very briefly in 2K14, but obviously, as you all well know, I wasn't recording back then, so it makes no odds. So there is no official lineage to this belt. These two guys are going to be competing to determine the first one. There's no, there's no shortage of Hall of Famers in this game. Absolutely no shortage of, of them, so... I actually found it harder to pick three guys, three legends, that weren't Hall of Famers for the Legends Championship earlier. And deliberately, as I said during that video, I deliberately didn't pick Hall of Famers for that for that triple threat match. For this reason. Because the Hall of Fame title I wanted to, to have its own little prestigious moment later in the show. You know, the absolute best of the best of the best of the best. You know, you compete for this title. I say that, which seems to be doozies going to the Hall of Fame uh, <laughs> over the years now they've made it an annual event it kind of sometimes feel like some of the names that go in are just there just to kind of fill out the numbers as it were but I mean hell regardless you get honoured right so this is your a traditional one on one match nothing special nothing crazy about this one Could be an interesting match down the line. Now, obviously, these guys as Hall of Famers are still capable of challenging for the Legends title and any other title that may come up, but it doesn't work the other way around. You must be inducted into the Hall of Fame in real life as well. No My Career Hall of Fame inductions before you guys say anything. Well, then again, who would? <laughs> There'd only be my own character then, really, wouldn't it? Depending on how good... I haven't really gotten into My Career yet. I haven't gotten into how meaty it is. So, from the sounds of things, from what I've heard, from what other people have said, it's pretty good. So, could keep me amused for most of the year, really, which would be pretty cool. I might do at least two of them so I can play kind of both the heel and face path. I tend to go for the face more often than not. I don't know why. I spent most of my years being a heel character, both, you know, in wrestling, in video games, in, in e-fetting and everything. I was always a, a heel character, and now I'm suddenly face and I've been sticking that way for a while so I might do a deliberate heel character eventually but yeah so no no my career hall of famers on if, if anybody's in the game this year that gets that's not currently in the hall of fame that gets inducted next year in the 2016 hall of fame ceremony that's got to be a rope break right yeah no what 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 <coughs> I'm so sorry Edge was definitely under the ropes then. He grabbed it before the three, I swear. Wow, this is becoming quite an epic show, really, isn't it? Yeah, he's under the ropes there, man. We've got one. We've got two. We've got three. The ref didn't see it. Oh, my God. Stone Cold Steve Austin, hook or crook, is your first. Hall of Fame Champion. But he screwed Edge to get it. Wowzers. That, that's pretty epic. I did not see that coming. Well, Stone Cold. Well, after that shocking end in the Hall of Fame Championship... We've got to move on, and it is time for our main event. This next match is a triple threat match, and it is for the WWE World Heavyweight 
Championship. This is the match we've been building to since the Royal Rumble in the pre-show with a small addition. Tyson Kidd beating out, and let's, let me list, the, list these out, Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, and Triple H in a fatal four-way in the first match on the card to become third man in this match. I mean, I know Tyson was pretty much all over the place in last year's universe mode, but, you know, the stats got reset this year, and especially since that wasn't in universe mode at all, man. So, but he's here, he's in the match, and he has a shot at becoming the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Challenger number two. I didn't really do that right, did they? <laughs> Challenger number two. England's own. The man that gravity forgot and the Royal Rumble winner. Neville. Now, Neville didn't exactly have a great showing last year. He won the Royal Rumble, yes. But ever since winning the Rumble... He kind of went on a losing streak, including a high-profile loss to Jack Swagger at the Elimination Chamber for the Hardcore title. But that was then. This is a new game, and as I said, new stats. You never know what could be pulled out of the bag, especially in a triple threat match, but more importantly, both Tyson and Neville might feel pretty good about themselves. But when your opponent, when the champion is this man, is the yes man, Daniel Bryan, the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. A man who won probably the most star-powered elimination chamber I've ever put together to become champion. And as we can all hope, he will one day again enter WrestleMania as the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Daniel Bryan. I'm liking the hair on the model this year. The problem they've always had with long hair though, isn't it? it? It never quite fits as it's supposed to. There we go. Graphic shows it all. WWE World Heavyweight Championship. There it is. The prize that's on the line. Tyson Kidd. Neville, Daniel Bryan, and of course this is a triple threat match so it is a no disqualification match as well, Bryan getting on early, taking down Neville then going after Tyson, classic airplane spin there, Daniel Bryan is a good old throwback when he wants to be, he loves using old school moves. Turns his attention to Neville. I wish I could turn my attention that easily. I've tried. It's amazingly difficult to switch focus. Yeah, as I said, no disqualifications. This is a triple threat match after all. No qualms, no questions. This is the main event of WrestleMania and we aren't going to let it go to crap. And let's face it, who wouldn't want to see this as a main event of WrestleMania? I mean, I know it's not everybody's favourites, but still... One day we will see another main event at WrestleMania full of guys. We actually we actually want that. I'm getting so excited I'm losing my voice. <laughs> full of guys we actually want there, you know? We just don't see it too often. We're always played with. Occasionally we get one guy we want in the main event. But it's usually accompanied by one guy that shouldn't be anywhere near it. I don't know about you. This past WrestleMania I was, I was pretty pleased. But I know a lot of people weren't happy that Roman Reigns was there. And a good majority weren't happy the Brock Lesnar was there, to be fair. You know, it depends which side of the audience you speak to, the, the hardcore fans or the casual ones. I think everybody was pretty upset with that one, so... It's probably why the, uh, the heist of the century went down as well as it did. But... Now, one day we can dream, eh? 
WrestleMania 32 probably isn't going to feature Seth Rollins anymore. If you don't know why, then well, why the hell are you watching a small-time WWE channel? You should know by now. He's injured. He's out. He's going to be out. We've seen some miraculous recoveries, but he's he's caught to be out for what six to nine months, and we are five months away from WrestleMania. It's been done, but even if he does come back healthy in time, are they going to have time for Seth to build a storyline? Probably not anywhere near a good enough chance to get back into the title picture. Although, considering WWE logic, like he could just show up on you know the Go Home Show and go, do you know what? I want another shot. And they'll give it to him just to boost pay per view numbers, you know. Break up there. As we all know, triple threat matches tend to last a while, and even amount of opponents and all. Got to make sure both guys are down or out before you go for the win. Danny Brown getting a good counter there. I'm not surprised that it's Tyson Kidd who goes for the weapons first. Do whatever it takes to win, eh, kid? Literally. Kid. Ow! That hurt. Kid going up. What we got here? What we got going on? Now it's Neville who goes up. Neville going up. Uh, phone call. So I'm, I'm a little bit discombobulated. Actually, doesn't show too much in the edit. Hopefully. The only problem with recording audio separately in the video is I've now got to match that up afterwards. It's going to be a bloody nightmare. <laughs> Yeah, these three still going at it. No one really getting the big advantage so far. Hopefully that will change soon. I mean, obviously Daniel Bryan is the favourite going into this, but you never know, especially in a triple threat match, man. Not necessarily down to skill as we saw with the Intercontinental. In fact, both championships in this part so far. Anything can happen. Titans right there. Dean stealing it out from under... Everyone in the IC title match and Stone Cold getting a rather controversial win. Won't get hung up there in the Hall of Fame Championship. So yeah, anything can happen. Look, Neville's on the outside now. But no, Daniel Bryan has still got plenty left in him. This is going to be close. No matter who comes out of it, is going to have a hell of a challenge going forward, though. Nice kick there by Tyson. Going for the heart lock. No, it's an Indian death lock, in fact. I don't see that too often anymore. Got waved off. Don't know if Daniel Bryan broke it then or never escaped either way. Still counts, doesn't it? <laughs> None of these guys seem to know what's going on. Guillotine there by Daniel Bryan. Not a guillotine. A guillotine. There goes B. Bryan. And Neville. Danny Bryan again, going for, looked like he might have gone for a cover then, he didn't do it in the end, but I think Daniel Bryan is definitely in, in control of this match at this point. There we go, the kicks, and look at the crowd, I like that they've added that. That's amazing. And way! But Neville there to take advantage. Even if Daniel Bryan can get going, if he goes for the yes lock, he's going to make it that much harder for him. With more time wasted getting that out than even you know even the running knee doesn't matter in a triple threat match I guess it depends how long it takes the guys to come back float over DDT by Tyson Kidd which seems to be a common running move amongst the uh, roster it has been for years now I think they've come up with some new ones I guess not too many guys do running grapples I don't know that's the best explanation I can come up with Nice counter by Tyson. Daniel Bryan gets back in control though. Nice throw. Neville going for the cover. <laughs> T-Bar looking out to the audience. They're like, what the hell are you doing? 
Doesn't make the save, but I guess felt like he didn't need to. Dropped it there by Daniel Bryan. Didn't really phase Tyson Kidd. Now hopefully we are going to see Tyson back in the ring at some point. Suffered a pretty severe neck injury now. He's been out a while. We've seen in the past neck injuries do shorten careers. Doesn't mean he's done, but you know, it's a typical time when the momentum comes in, he goes out. See what I mean? There's the yes lock. Neville trying to break it up. He hasn't gotten there yet. There he is, though. It's a break up. <laughs> Chair shot. Daniel Bryan just shrugs it off. No matter. No matter to Daniel Bryan. He, he is saying in control of this match so far. But I wonder what he's going for here. What he's going to set up for. He's going for a comeback. Lying around the ring goes the little goat man. <laughs> Tyson takes a bit of damage there too. Why not? But there you go. Momentum stopped. Can Tyson could take control of this? He's going to set up. Doesn't matter. <laughs> While Neville's being set up, Daniel Bryan goes for the kicks again. That's amazing. D-Bry totally in control. Way! But Neville's there, man. Neville's there. Brian's setting up again, but look, he made a mistake. Poison Frankensteiner there by Neville. Is he going to steal the championship? Got one. We got two. Oh, I thought Neville was going to steal it out from Daniel Bryan then. That would have been pretty epic. There we go, over the top goes Neville. Double underhook suplex there by Daniel Bryan. Looked like he was going to go in the corner and set up for the running knee. Tyson says, no way, Daniel Bryan doesn't give a shit. <laughs> yes, lock on Tyson, kid. Neville's not doing anything about it. This could be the end right here if Neville doesn't break. He's broken it. He's sore. Again, I said it again. I said it before and I'll say it again, should I say. The yes lock taking too much time to be effective. Match continues. Down goes Neville. Brian going for the cover on Tyson Kidd. That's an interesting play. Two. Oh, Tyson Kidd kicks it out. Nice kick to the back there. Neville going for the cover now, but Brian is right there. Two. And a kick out. Bloody hell. But if Daniel Bryan just stands there while the championship just goes away, that would have been ridiculous. Everybody's tripping up over the steel chair now. And we're going for the, the kick out suplex there. Kick out snap, su snap suplex by Daniel Bryan. I'm getting all confused and confuddled. Getting all excited. Tyson is back in the game. This could go any way, any way whatsoever at this point. All the guys are starting to show a little bit of exhaustion now. Neville's going to go up. Red arrow in mind. It doesn't matter. Daniel Bryan is there to pick up Tyson. And the kicks land again. Bryan has them stopped though. Doesn't matter. He goes for a couple of the same. One. Neville breaks it up. Manic match so far. I mean, this is what you'd expect from three fast-paced technical grapplers, grapplers like these three. It would just continue until somebody just had nothing left to give. This one's going to hit. It's going to be the red arrow that hits. It goes straight for the cover. Daniel Bryan breaks it up. He's there. He's ready. He's waiting. And this suplex there by Bryan again. Tyson Kidd is getting up already. Bryan. Wow, the screen couldn't handle it then. Never mind the crowd. Running knee. But Tyson Kidd is right there. Daniel Bryan actually sees that for once. AI is smarter this year, apparently. 
Well, not enough to finish it up. Cover by Tyson. One, two. It never wasn't there. That's was the first time I thought a title, you know, could actually change hands then. Go for the cover on Neville. Smart move, but Brian's already up. Break up. We're back to where we started, really, aren't we? Yeah, that's interesting. Get rid of Tyson altogether. I think he's going to go for a springboard there, but... <laughs> Never mind, it didn't happen. Now we're on the outside. But this isn't a false count anywhere match, ladies and gentlemen. The match has to end inside the ring. <laughs> Everybody tripping up over everyone else here. Off the table goes Neville. <laughs> Titan just having the crap kicked out of him there by Neville and Brian. There we go, back into the ring. This is where we need to be for the title to change hands. The Tyson kid down on the outside. Can anybody take advantage here? Looks like Neville's planning on it, but Tyson's up. And he's in. This match just ain't over yet, baby. And whoop de do Tyson saves himself. German suplex. Nope. Countered by Neville. Man, or mate, this match could go on forever at this rate. Uh, forgive me if I get this move on, but I believe that was a Northern Lights by Neville. Counter after counter after counter here. And that I don't even know what to call that throw, man. It looks like it'd be effective, you know. Go for a poison Frankensteiner again. It matters. Daniel Bryan is in control of Neville. The back suplex there. I know I used to call that a back body drop a lot in the preseason. I apologise. I knew better. I didn't need to be corrected. I just got excited in the moment. Down goes Bryan. Tyson not going for the cover. It looked like he might have been going for the sharpshooter then. Mistake made. Neville poison Frankenstein onto the chair. Holy balls. Brian dropping Neville. This could be his chance. He's going for it. He is going for it, but he's going for it on the wrong man. He's going to hit Tyson. He has hit Tyson with it. But if he goes for the cover, Neville will break. Never mind. Neville went for the cover. And we are still alive in this match. Over the top. Tyson's there though, man. Jesus Christ almighty. There is something to be said for user played matches at this point, I think, because some of us would have had the smarts to get rid of the third guy. Neville. What are you going for here? Spinning elbow there, I think, you know. More of a Cesaro movement than Neville one, but hell, whatever, whatever works, right? Tyson's down. Neville's not going for Daniel Bryan. Mistake made again. He could have potentially won that match there. Whoa, wait, wait, never mind. That's the heart lock. It's in. He's never going to tap. No, Daniel Bryan breaks it up. Cover by D. Bry. Doesn't make a difference. Every which way. Doesn't matter. There's been a couple of times I think the match could have been won and it just hasn't been, but for the most part, these guys just aren't staying down long enough. Neville going for the arrow. He's got to hit Tyson Kidd with the red arrow. No, he's not. The inverted 450. But Daniel Bryan is there. Can he take advantage? This is it. He goes for the cover. This could be it now. Finally, one, two, three. It's over. Your winner and still WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Daniel Bryan.
Man, this match went on forever. Back and forth and back and forth. It looked like at any point any one of these guys could have won this match. I mean, you can say Daniel Bryan took advantage of Neville's move there, but at that point the damage had been done. It really makes no odds who did the damage in the first place. It had been done. They'd all kicked the living hell out of each other, as it were. Set of kicks here by Daniel Bryan. Got that out a few times. There's another one, the final kick. Putting Tyson down. But there you go, really, ladies and gentlemen. The WWE 2K16 season is off to a big splash. We've set ourselves up for the matches going forward, for the shows going forward. We're going to break, take a break for a couple of days now while we set up the main universe mode. But we will be back with Monday Night Raw in a couple of days. And your man leading the charge, your WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Daniel Bryan. <laughs> yeah, that's worth a yes charm. Absolutely amazing performance by all three men in this match. They are all going to be considered top contenders going forward. But ladies and gentlemen, my name has been the Ripper Danny B. This has been WrestleMania. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and we will see you 